How you doing? Steve Noble, Noble Moto, uh, here in the February cold garage in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, we're going to do today is we're going to put a clutch in my Dyna. I uh, got a new clutch from uh, somewhere online. And um, it hasn't really been slipping yet, but it's got about 52,000 miles on it. I'm often kind of hard on the gas, on the throttle, and you know, decel and everything. So it's probably getting a little bit whooped. Um, so while we got it down this winter, we're going to tear it apart and uh, put a new clutch in it. And uh, that way everything will be good for the whole summer. So let's get right to it. All right, here we are underneath the primary, and uh, your drain plug is right here. It's right underneath your clutch. You're either going to have a little hex head bolt like this or a Allen screw that's going to be recessed up, back up in here. But I'm um, going to want to drain the oil out, of course, to start out first things. Um, so we're just going to back it out of there. Should be a little uh, O-ring on here that keeps it sealed. And uh, pretty much every time you take this out, try to get a new O-ring if you can. Um, these things are kind of known to leak. Uh, and you don't have to tighten it up a whole lot to get the seal up in there. Um, but you still want to be kind of meticulous with it. So, there we go. And Alright, next thing we're going to do on the list uh, is the oils drain. Uh, we've got to pull the uh, foot peg mount off of here. Uh, and on mid controls, it's just two Allen bolts on the bottom. It takes a 5 16 Allen wrench. Use a conventional Allen wrench. I happen to have socket wrench ones. It makes projects like this a lot easier. Just spin these out of here. It's only two bolts that hold your foot peg on. <laughs> Next on the list, going to go up here to the shifter. Your shifter is only really held on. Here, wipe some of this leaky grease off of here. Uh, your shifter is only really held on by this one bolt and then the spline that the shifter actually rides on, on your mid controls. On your forward controls, you won't have to do any of this. Because uh, all this will be clear and it'll just be one smooth case. But, it's a half inch bolt, or half inch wrench. Technically it's 5 sixteenths bolt, but... Take a half inch socket wrench or open end wrench. And just uh, pull the bolt right on out of there. There you go, that's off of there. And then from there, just grab a shifter, kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit. You'll see it start to come off the uh, splines there. If it's been on a while, it might be a little stuck. But just slide it right off there, just like so. We'll set that to the side, and of course, we're gonna take the old bolt, throw it right back. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, now this center plate may not look like something you have to pull out, but two of these bolts actually run through into the inner primary. And um, so you are going to have to pull them out to pull the cover off. And of course, uh, you're realigning this thing with this little center hole here without the plate uh, or with the plate on it would probably be pretty challenging. Plus, on top of that, I've got a gasket in here that's been weeping a little bit. So we're going to pull that out. We're going to swap it out with Cometic gasket. Supposedly, they've got some amazing stuff they're going to send on over. Uh, I'll tell you about that when we do reassembly. But first things first. Now, uh, if you've got a stock bike, everything probably has Torx bits on it in here. Uh, which is these little star bits, and it's like a T25 or T30. Um, in full disclosure, I already broke these free. Um, I personally really do not like Torx bits, so I swap them out with stainless steel Allen wrench screws whenever I can. Um, I didn't get to these two, uh, so probably when we put this back together, I'm going to end up replacing these with Allen bolts. Uh, it's a core 20 thread, if uh, you need to know that. There's two short little core 20 bolts, and um, looks probably... Quarter 20 by half or three quarter. Uh, and thread in there and uh, makes it a lot easier for removal and reassembly down the road. Those Torx bits, the socket wrench doesn't always sit in there, at least in my experience, and then they're easy to strip out. Uh, then from there, pull these two loose. All right, got all the bolts out of there. And uh, these things are often hard to grab because it might be covering oil plus it's chrome. Uh, so I've got the uh, Robo Grip pliers here. Remember these things from the 90s? I think Bob Vila endorsed them. They really weren't anything amazing, but they do work nice for stuff like this. So I'm put a towel over it so I don't scratch a chrome. Take these uh, as seen on TV pliers and uh, try to grab the shaft there and rock it right on out and should be in good shape. Should pop right on out of there. All right, so 
Next step, pull all these uh, bolts, you know, Allen screws out here. Pull all these things off. Should pop right on out of there. Almost all our oil's drained out. We got a faint little dribble still happening on there, but I think we'll be all right. So, gonna go around and loosen these up evenly. Make sure the thing doesn't twist at all. Do this in time lapse. There we go. I'm going to uh, let that last little bit of oil drain down the pan there. Sometimes you got to give these things a little swat with a mallet to get them to break free. This was not one of those times. Make messes. So here's what we got going on here. All right, so now that we can see everything that's off, I can show you again what got going on. You're looking for a half inch to five eighths of play right going on right here. And to tell you the truth, we probably got a little bit, maybe a little close to on the upside of five eighths. So Really, when I put this back together, I'll probably move this tensioner up one little notch. I can see down in here in the bottom, I've got a little groove worn into my puck. And uh, if you get any notable grooves worn into this puck, um, you definitely want to replace it. This one's going to be larger than what you've got probably going on on your stock setup, mostly because this is from Baker. Uh, it's because I actually went down one tooth on the front sprocket here, uh, from a 25 to a 24, when I put the BDL compensator on to lower the gear ratio. So check up the extra slack in the chain. Uh, Baker sells a puck here that's just a little bit bigger uh, than your stock one. It's a little thicker, you know, here to here. Um, so it makes it, you know, easier to adjust your tension on it. Um, so when I pull it out, I'll probably pull it out of there at some point too to make sure it's in good condition. So I'll show you that in the video later on. Now, it's been brought up about what type of oil do I run in here? Or what a lot of people run in here. I run like a uh, 75 140 synthetic uh, that like Mobile One makes. It's designed for limited slip differentials. Uh, and that gives it the friction modifier, which uh, is what helps you know the clutch operate smoothly. And uh, some people run automatic transmission fluid, but since most of what's going on here getting lubed is the chain going through the gear, I want some big, thick, heavy oil. Uh, it's sliding right across here, and I'm engine breaking hard. I want some big, heavy oil in here to lubricate this. And uh, this puck's probably got about 25,000 miles on it or so, and we've just got faint little scratches worn into it. Uh, so really, it didn't even need service yet. Uh, this puck did or didn't, or even like the chain tensioner. Maybe the, like I said, maybe take it up one little notch, but that's about it. All right, we're back here at the clutch. Now, Harley sells a special tool to take the pressure off of this pressure plate before you take this apart. And, you know, if you watch enough of my videos, you'll find I'm not a fan of buy, having to buy any special tools when I don't absolutely have to. So, you're in the garage. You're trying not to spend a fortune on this because you're doing it yourself. So, here's a little trick. These are not very large bolts. Um, but they do all together hold this pressure plan. So, we're going to back these out one at a time. We're going to go across, you know, like the lug nuts on your car. And we're just going to back them out like a quarter turn each one. No more. That way we don't side load anything. We don't break any bolts off. And then when we put it back together, I'm going to buy new ones of all these bolts because they've already been torqued and stretched. So we'll replace them with brand new ones. You can get these at your hardware store, especially if you've got like a Ace or something like that around. Home Depot kind of sucks for it, but I think they have them. Um, or even industrial supply place. But we're going to replace these with all new bolts. That way they aren't stretched or anything. So here we go. It's 10 millimeter wrench. Yes, 10 millimeter. It's metric on your Harley. Deal with it. We're going to go around cross pattern. Break each one of them free. Just like.
And of course, this one's just a, got just enough drag. I can't do it with my fingertips. There we go. There we go. All the bolts are out. A little retaining ring there. And this piece right here is your pressure plate. And drip some more oil down there. And that is removal of your pressure plate. Set that off to the side. All right, got all the bolts off of here. Now we're actually going to lift the uh, backing plate right off of this sucker. Now be careful, all the clutch plates might not come out of here evenly. Uh, so they might fall on the floor, they might try to run around. Just be ready for it. So we're going to try and walk it on back out of here like so. Ooh, look at that. It's like I knew what I was doing. And there you have it. Here's your whole clutch pack right here. There's our friction plates. I kind of stuck together. There's some oil plates, or I'm sorry, steel plates. And I'll look good and oily. And uh, this clutch, actually, this clutch was in pretty good shape. Four, three, two. All right, so I stuck a friction plate and a steel in here, back up into the clutch housing, clutch basket, just so you can see what's going on. So you got your steel plate in here, and you can see the ribs. They grab on the inner hub here. You got your friction disc here. They grab on the outer hub out here. Now, when your motor's running and the bike's in neutral, this housing up here spins. Well, really, when the clutch is pulled in, this housing up here spins. And we have the clutch pulled in. It takes all the pressure off the pressure plate, and all these discs get loose. So this outer disc here spins with the outer housing. Eh. Then the, uh, whoops, pulled one off with it. And the steel plates here spin with the inner housing. When you uh, let off the clutch, the spring takes over, clamps all this together, power transfers from the motor into the transmission, out the back door. Two. All right, so we got our new friction disc here, and uh, what's going on with these is uh, this friction material needs to have oil soaked into it. Um, this is true whether you're doing clutches on motorcycles or clutches on automatic transmissions. So you need to soak these overnight. If you don't, the oil might not permeate in there, and uh, your clutch might burn up pretty fast. So got ourselves a little plastic roller pan, paint pan here. We got some 90 weight. Actually, we got some 75 140 uh, Sin Power Gear Oil uh, with limited slip additive. There we are, limited slip additive. You really don't need to use the high end stuff for this. The cheap stuff would work fine. But this is what we got, so this is what we're using. I mean, it's only a few dollars difference. So I'm going to pour this in here. I'm going to let the clutch plates sit in overnight. Now, while well, I'm sitting here for at least 24 hours, I'm going to move them around a little bit here and see if we can't get them all to submerge. Maybe. Maybe should use a little deeper pan. But, it is what it is. We'll make it work. I'll come out here and move them around periodically as the night goes on. All right, here we are, um, ready for reassembly. Got everything tore down. Let the uh, clutch friction disc soak in some gear oil. Uh, ended up soaking for about a week or so, um, just because I didn't really get back to it. Uh, so according to the instructions, and yes, I read the instructions when I get new stuff. I dropped that spring on the floor. According to the instructions, um, it says to start with the friction. Go friction steel, friction steel, friction steel. Um, it says to use a friction up against that back plate that's already in there. Remove the stock preload springs. Since this is a nine plate kit, uh, going from the stock eight plate one, um, should give me more, according to their ad, it should give me more, you know, clutch friction surface and everything. Uh, should make grab better. I'll let you know. But here's our basic start. So, pretty straightforward here. Friction. Slide right on back in there. Then from there, of course, reach across camera. Steel. These are all the same thickness. Steel. And that grabs the inner hub. Pretty straightforward. Shouldn't have to file these. It should all just line up and snap right in there. There we go. And then repeat the process the rest of the way until it's fully stacked up.
All right, we got a nice stack going on. Everything fits right up flush right there at the end. I think there's still a stead, a little bit of slip there, a little bit of clearance. I hope so. And we're going to slide this sucker right on here. An actual backing plate there. All right. From there, got ourselves a new diaphragm spring. Uh, I think this one's from Barnett or somebody. It's supposed to be a slightly heavier rate than the stock one. Well, the stock one had some miles on it. Let's see if it'll stay there for a second. Spot it with our hands while we grab the backing plate that's supposed to go on here. Wipe that clean. We're going to put that back on before it falls off. Now we're going to take our ring here. Line it all up with the bolt holes, and we went out, bought some new bolts. We're going to start these in here. Okay. All right, so got those two nuts checked, started in there. Uh, check the service manual. Um, did not say anything about any Loctite, so we will not be putting any in there. So now there's actually a special tool to do this with, to compress the spring with. And of course, Harley sells, and of course I don't have one. So I'm gonna be starting all these in with my fingers here, and I'm just gonna go around and tighten them very gently and evenly, just maybe like quarter turn at a time. That way, I don't overload the bolts, don't strip out the bolt holes. Should just all just thread right on back in there. No. finger tight. I'll go around and crisscross pattern this way. All right, so got our little primary locking tool, a little wedge thing. You just take it. Stick that sucker up there on the chain, in the primary chain, should hold everything in place. So, back to where we were, torquing the stuff down, that once it tightens up, there we go, I think I over torqued that one. There we go. And last one here. All right, we're good to go. Clutch is reassembled. All right, so next step is to loosen this jam nut here. Now, full disclosure, I have it loose now because um, when I tried to take it loose already once, realized it was under tension because I did not back this out before I put the whole pressure plate on. So I had to take this off, back this out, retorque it all down, go back to the whole procedure again. So make sure you take this thing, back this bolt off or set screw, whatever you want to call it, back this off before you do any reassembly there. Otherwise, it's like you're holding your clutch lever in. So what we're going to do, hopefully you can see what's going on here. So you can see it spins real freely easily there. So we're going to go in until I feel a light little two-finger contact there. We're going to back it off back quarter turn. And we're going to run the nut in here. We're going to hold it. The Allen wrench and tighten up the jam nut. Hold again with the Allen wrench. Tighten up jam nut. Actually, we're going to use the box end. Now we get better grip on it. There you go. Alrighty. 